Okay, so we've already talked about how the area of any triangle is equal to one half base times height. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at some particular properties of equilateral and isosceles triangles that we can use to help us find their areas. So let's take a look at this picture right here. It's an equilateral triangle. And I wanna take a look at what I know about equilateral triangles. I know that all three of the sides are congruent and I've got those marked here with the congruence marks. I also know that all three angles are congruent, so I'll go ahead and mark those here. And not only are those angles congruent, I also know the, the size of that angle, the measure of those angles, it's actually 60 degrees. So each one of these angles is 60 degrees. Well, a particular uh, additional property of an equilateral triangle is that if I draw an altitude on an equilateral triangle, then it, notice it divides this equilateral triangle into two smaller triangles. And in particular, not only does it divide it into two smaller triangles, but notice that this triangle over here, this angle is 60 degrees, this one over here is 60 degrees, and they have two congruent sides here and here. So I've got a congruent angle here, a congruent angle here, congruent side here, congruent side here, and since this is the altitude, which I know is perpendicular, I've got two congruent angles here and here also. Well, so I've got an angle, an angle, and a side on this small triangle, congruent to an angle, an angle, and a side on this small triangle. What I have here is this triangle, call it triangle number one, and this triangle, triangle number two, those two triangles are congruent by the angle, angle, side postulate. Well, that's a very handy property that I can make use of when I'm solving certain types of area problems using equilateral triangles. So let me just note here that triangle number one is congruent to triangle number two when I draw this altitude on an equilateral triangle. All right, And we're going to make use of that in just a moment. Let's take a look now at an isosceles triangle. And again, I have these two sides are marked congruent, so I know those are my two congruent sides here. Let me go ahead and also draw in on this triangle an altitude. And I notice again that this divides this triangle into two smaller triangles. Well, also remember one of the things that I know about an isosceles triangle is that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Now, I don't know the measure of these two angles like I do on an equilateral triangle. The equilateral triangle, the measures of its angles are always 60 degrees. Well, I don't happen to know the measures of these angles, but I do know they're congruent. Well, once again, notice I have two angles here for these two small triangles, triangle one and triangle two. These two angles are congruent. These two sides are congruent. And also I have these angles down here, the 90 degree angles, those are congruent. Well, once again, I have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. I've got two small triangles that happen to be congruent. So I can mark for this one, I can say triangle number one is congruent to triangle number two. And again, that's going to be a very handy uh, property to have for an isosceles triangle. So let's take a look at how we might use this property that when we draw an altitude, on an equilateral or isosceles triangle, it divides that triangle into two congruent triangles. So let's say we had a problem like this one. It says find the area of the equilateral triangle. And I have a picture here of an equilateral triangle, and I'm given the length of this side. Well, since it's an equilateral triangle, right away I know that this side is also 12, and this side here is also 12. But I'm looking for the area of this triangle, and it looks like I don't have enough information here to find the area because I know the area, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Well, I have the base of the triangle, that's 12, but I don't have the height. Well, but since I know that when I draw in my height or my altitude, it divides this into two congruent triangles, I think I'm going to be able to find the height. Here's a 60 degree angle right here. Since these two triangles are congruent, this 60 degree angle is actually divided into two congruent angles because again, this triangle is congruent to this triangle, so these two angles must be congruent. That means 
that's a 30 degree angle, and that's a 30 degree angle. Well, here I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Not only that, if these two triangles are congruent, this side of this small triangle must be congruent to this side of this small triangle. And if both of them together are equal to 12, well, this side must be equal to 6, and this side must be equal to 6. Well, now I have a triangle right here. Let me break this small triangle out over here. I have a right triangle right here. It's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The hypotenuse is 12. This short leg is 6. And this side right here, which happens to be my height, let me just call that H, this side here is equal to, since it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I know that this side is equal to this side times square root of 3. So it turns out, even though all I was told was that this was an equilateral triangle and I was told the length of the side, I actually do know the height of this equilateral triangle. I know the height is 6 radical 3. Now I can calculate its area. The area of this equilateral triangle is 1 half times the base. The base is 12 times the height. The height is 6 radical 3. And if I multiply all these numbers together, let's see, 1 half times 12 will give me 6. And 6 times 6 radical 3 will give me 36 radical 3. And so the area of this equilateral triangle is 36 times the square root of 3 square units. Let's take a look at this example involving an isosceles triangle. It says find the area of the isosceles triangle. Here's my isosceles triangle. Here are my two congruent sides. And I'm told the length of this side is 5. Well, since this is congruent to this one, I know this one must also be 5. And I'm also told the length of my base. My base is 8. And even though it's not marked on here, I also know that these two angles are congruent because the base angles of an isosceles triangle are always congruent. And once again, I'm faced with trying to find the area of a triangle, which I know is 1 half times base times height. And I know what the base is. The base is 8, but I don't know the height. Well, let's see if we can figure it out. Now, once again, I remember the property that we discussed just a few minutes ago. I know that if I draw this altitude here, it divides this into two congruent triangles. Well, if these two triangles are congruent, that means that this side on this triangle must be congruent to this side on this triangle, which means that must be 4 and that must be 4 because they have to add up to 8. So I know the length of this side is 4. I know the length of this side is 5. Now if I look at just one of these triangles, and let me break this triangle out over here. It's a right triangle. This length is 4. The hypotenuse is 5 and I'm looking for the length of this side right here. And again, let me call that h because that's the height of my isosceles triangle. Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this value of h. 5 is my hypotenuse here, and these are my two legs. So 4 squared plus h squared equals 5 squared. And if I do this arithmetic, then I find that h is equal to 3. So in this case, I was able to use my Pythagorean theorem and the fact that I've got a right triangle and this side I figured out is 4 because it must be the same as this side, which is 4. And I used that to figure out what my value for h is. Now I can just plug those numbers in here and I can find the area of my isosceles triangle. 1 half times the base, the base is 8, times the height, and the height I just found is 3. So that gives me 1 half times 24, which is 12 square units. Now you have some other examples in your notes in which you're asked to find the areas of some isosceles triangles and some equilateral triangles. I'm going to let you finish those, and we'll take a look at those in class tomorrow.